Hi everyone, Corey here from the Knitting All the Blankets podcast and welcome to my mid uh, quarter update for uh, 2019 quarter two. Um, normally I would do, I'd been go going to quarterly uh, videos, but I just had a couple, so much stuff start piling up that I figured why not do a quick video. So. I got my notes, I got a pile of stuff around me, so get that closer. Let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to show you is um, these are charms that I've been meaning to show you guys for like the last couple of videos and I just completely forget about them because I didn't write them down which is something that I have changed in terms of my, um, huh. um, I just noticed something about what I was going to show you about my, um, podcast notes. I keep a running page in my little B6 flex. And when I get enough stuff on here, that's when I know it's just time to go ahead and do a video. So the first thing I'm going to show you are these Heidi and Joe alphabet charms. And I would say they have every single letter of the alphabet, but I just realized that there's no H and uh, somebody replaced the H with an R. So I have two R's, which is no big deal, but they're really cute. Let's see if I can, some of them have flipped around and a lot of them are just stamped uh, metal pieces. And I got these on clearance at Joann's, I think. Like I said, they've been hanging around a while and I don't remember where I got them. All right, and then this one is the rest of the alphabet. Now these don't have the lobster clasps on them yet I do need to go ahead and put those on so now that I've shown these I can just add that to my craft project list I do have um, like the knitting projects list but then there's like some other crafty stuff I like to do that I just haven't made time for yet so yeah so these will go on the list the other ones and and if I didn't say it, they're going to become like stitch marker progress keeper type things. Uh, the next set that I bought, I believe these were on clearance as well. Uh, these do have the, the lobster clasps on them, so I can just go ahead and start using them. These are the Lore DIY. I've got the fast food ones with a burger and some popcorn and some french fries and a slice of watermelon. And I've got the coffee ones with a donut, an iced coffee, a hot coffee, and a little coffee cup. Um, and I find the, and I do kind of find it funny that I bought this because um, I don't drink coffee that often. But oh well. So those are cute. They've been sitting on my desk for oh, probably since January, February. Um, the next, I've got some acquisitions to show you, and um, no, I'm going to do the boneyard shawl first. Normally, I show you my dishcloths that I've been knitting, um, but I'll show those probably at the end of quarter two video. So, I've been working on my Stephen West boneyard shawl, and if you follow me on Instagram, you've been seeing progress that I made with it. The project bag I have this in is a husky tool bag and there are so many pockets in this thing it's ridiculous. Um, I don't buy normal project bags so um, let me try to find where. I don't want the ball of yarn to go everywhere. I am on the second to last section. I thought I was just going to end with the lovely white blue cupcake yarn, but um, 
it turns out I didn't check the yardage for this shawl and I am short about 70 yards of yarn. So I'm going to hold this up. Again, if you follow me on Instagram, which is at Corey.large, you can see better pictures. And this is what it looks like so far. And so I'm down on the third section of this color. Let me just hold this up. And um, again, I'm like getting tangled up in ends and everything. At last, where's my notes? At last count, and I do my counting at when I get to a ridge row. If you um, have done made the boneyard shawl, you know every 12 rows you do a ridge row. At that last row, I had 290 stitches. Yeah, wait. No, 291 stitches. I keep forgetting about that stitch in the middle. Um, and the progress keepers I am using on this, you've seen my little bone, my little tooth. Um, then I have my little chocolate chip cookie, which was a gift from Sheena of Casual Fashion Queen. And then I tied in the, uh, I guess this is a little Bible charm that came off a bracelet. A, you probably aren't going to be able to read it, but um, it came off of a bracelet that I took apart because I don't wear a lot of bracelets. So I'm almost done with it. This is how much of the last ball I have, and which just leads me actually right into acquisitions. Um, oh, one more thing. I finally did the smart thing, and you see the little bit of orange right there, and you can see the orange right there. I put in a lifeline because when I connected, these are my Takumi U US 8 5 millimeter bamboo interchangeables. And not only am I using interchangeables, but I have connected two of the cables. And I know my luck that if I hadn't put a lifeline in, this those cables were gonna come apart and I was going to lose this. So every 12 rows, once I've done the ridge row, I take the, the orange lifeline yarn out and I weave it back through into the new section. So if I do lose it, I'm only losing at most um, 10, 11 rows. So maybe 12. So that's what works. Uh, what I wanted to finish this, and I had it in my head, and I didn't explain it properly to my friend Anne of Twin Mommy Creations when I placed my order, is I wanted to have the finishing yarn be a combination of this nice hot pink and this dark teal. Like I said, it transfers nicely into acquisitions. Now, put this back in my sack. This toolbox bag has so many interior pockets that I'm able to keep the um, the needles pointed down and stick them into pockets so that they don't poke anything. So there's that. Okay. So in my, so the custom order that I asked for from Ann she, um, this is going to become a regular colorway in her shop. Uh, if you follow her on Instagram, you've seen it and you've seen my comments on it. It's called Berry Picking Season. And I've got two skeins of it. Um, but this isn't quite what I wanted to finish off the shawl. Um, it... It goes a little too dark in some areas and too light in others, and I wanted that hot fluorescent pink. Anne knows this. Um, I'm having deja vu because I feel like I've talked about this. So I'm going to get through the rest of this episode, check my last episode, and um, 
if I if I'm just repeating myself, then I'm gonna I'm not even gonna put this up. Anyways, so I um, of course I still bought these because I'm going to do make another shawl with them, and the yarn that's going to go with it is. This is a Malabrigo Silky that I got um, at a nice little yarn shop in Finley, Ohio. If I can find the information for that one, I will link it below. I also have my, which one is this? Ah, this one is... Uh, Claudia hand painted yarns and in the colorway Hawaii I'm gonna have to recake this thing I'm just looking at it I'm gonna have to um, I bought this at four pearls yarn shop several years ago and um, just haven't knit with it yet so I'm gonna use that for part of it and then I have my hedgehog fi fibers um, boombox colorway that I bought in England and this is one of the last yarns that I bought in England it's one of two I think that are left this one and my David Bowie one so what I'm thinking of when I do whatever it is I do with this I need bigger hands is it's gonna all go something like this I don't know what design I'm going to do yet. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Two hands. I don't know what design I'm going to do yet, but it's going to work. And the bag that it's in is one of Anne's lovely drawstring bags. That It's the sheep with all of the different uh, sheep breeds on it. I had to get that one because... She sent me the picture when she was first thinking about these and I said, you know, what if you did a black sheep with the white, with the white letters, and she did it. And so to me, that's the one I helped design, so I had to buy it. So yeah, um, so what am I going to do to end the shawl? Um, to end the shawl, what I'm going to do is Anne and I sat down and talked. Well, by sat down and talked, I mean we texted. And she has dyed, um, she did two different shades of hot pink and I've gone over there, picked out the one I want, and then what I've asked her to do is just speckle, heavy speckle in some of that dark teal, uh, and that's what I'm going to use to finish. And essentially once I get that yarn, I'm going to go ahead and just finish the shawl. Um, I'm not going to try to stretch it out, I'm just going to go ahead and finish it um yeah if my count is correct it depends on I told her I only needed 70 yards and I think she's gonna do um 100 yards for me at least um uh, and of course I'm paying her for this this is not just because Anne's one of my best friends doesn't mean I get shit for free I'm not I wouldn't do that anyways um but right now, Anne is in the middle of getting rid of, get, not getting rid, getting ready for Stitches Atlanta in a few weeks. And I'm jealous because I'm not going. Uh, I just, I can't this, this time. Maybe if it comes back next year, I'll be able to go. Uh, so I'm not bugging her too badly about getting that done. I know she knows what yarn I want. Um, she wrote down what she did to make that colorway uh, the one I picked out and so I know it'll happen uh, the last thing that I bought where she had some uh, inspiration minis and this one is go to where you feel alive this one is soul blossoming this one is find yourself this one is fall asleep with the dream, with with a dream, and this one right here is wake up with a purpose. Several of these are their own uh, hanks and skeins in her shop, um, but 
I have a mini skin addiction, as we all know. Uh, so what's coming up? Well, again, if you follow me on Instagram, you've seen how I've been organizing the cotton yarn and, and all that. We're moving things around. And um, I've got, I'm looking across my uh, my living room and I've got this basket that's just got a bunch of my smaller project bags with um, smaller quicker projects in them uh, to keep me occupied until we get done what we're gonna get done uh, the bulk of my yarn is now packed up we're not moving we're just moving rearranging stuff in our house and that meant the yarn, the yarn had to get packed up, and that's fine. I knew this was coming. This was all my idea. Um, oh, mini skein 10 stitch blanket. Hang on, let me go grab that. So this is what happens when I don't write things down, because mini skein 10 stitch wasn't even on here. So it's still in the Christmas basket, because I haven't, I can't be bothered to move it. Um, the mini skein set I'm currently working on is the Brew City Yarns Arabian Nights Colorways. Um, uh, check out my Instagram for pictures of that. Um, but I'm going to hold this thing up. Um, and I can't remember where I, wa where I was the last time I showed it. But I finished the nature ones. I can't even see through the blanket to see if it's... Oh, hang on. I kind of can. I can see right there. There are some kind of big holes in some areas. Like in the corners. And I can peek through. But, um... It's getting big. Where's that needle? Don't want to lose my needle. So I finished the Lion Brand Nature's Bonbons. And then tied in the Bruce City Yarns Arabian Nights Colorways colorway um I think I should shown you guys I made my own little um sock sack out of a pair of um old worn out <laughs> yoga pants um because I didn't have a sheep squeezer at the time I have one now but anyways this is what it is and this is uh what uh what's holding my little cake together and um the order in which I'm doing them, there are eight minis, and it's Abu, Aladdin, Magic Carpet, Genie, Raja, Jasmine, Iago, Jafar, and I am on Genie. So I am, after I finish this, the mini, the current colorway I'm on, I will be halfway through this mini skein set. So again, I can't remember what I showed you last guys last time. That's the Abu colorway. That's the Aladdin colorway, and the progress keepers just mark either 50 rows or 100 rows, whatever I feel like knitting at the time. Um, and then I'm trying not to let my needle like get knocked out because it's a DPN. That is the magic carpet one, and this beauty is that's Genie. So I've shown you guys that I can actually take all the progress keepers off of this thing because they're getting a little jangly. Um, I'm almost to the point where I'm going to circle around again with progress keepers. I'm, yeah, I'm right there or right here and other progress keepers start there. So, um, I'll take those off after. I um after I'm done filming so I'll just set that right there the uh, so my, that was one of my knitting goals for this year was to get four sets of minis knitted into this blanket and with ha waiting on the yarn from Anne to finish the boneyard shawl and only knitting five dishcloths a month for uh, craft show inventory I've been putting a lot of work on this blanket during the week, I will knit 50 rows, 
um, a night or try to and on the weekends I try to do 100 rows a day and for those that think oh wow that's a lot it seems like a lot of knitting but it's actually not a lot of progress because here's yesterday's here's this morning's progress keeper then here's where I got so I'm not stretching this or I'm trying not to stretch it just to give you an idea of from right there to right there that is a hundred rows <sighs> um, because I'm like nutty in my crafting TN where I'm keeping notes on all these projects um, nope I was right the first sorry making a note um, I calculated just how many rows I thought were in this already and I I'm I know I'm over 5,000 rows the way I did the calculation if anybody's interested is when I add start a new mini skein set because they're all gonna be about the same um, it's actually in here yeah that's what it is um, I keep track of how how many rows it takes to knit a particular mini. So, um, so like the Lion Brand Nature bonbons, it took I don't even remember what my math was on this. Hundred ninety one rows. It took 191 rows to, um, for the Lion Brand Minis, and I can assume that's going to be for all of them, for one of those little balls. Times that by 8, and that entire mini skein set was 1,523.2 rows. Um, so now I'm having fun doing that with the Arabian Nights Minis. I had the calculation and then it just didn't seem right to me so I'm redoing it. Where'd this little gnat come from? This little gnat's buzzing around my face. Um, so yeah, the Bruce City, okay, Bruce City Yarns Arabian Nights colorway, um, those are those will be 200 and or no 2336 rows total so according to my notes I'm actually now over 7,000 rows total on this blanket and that's just an estimate because the hand spun at the beginning I couldn't even tell you because some of it were just little eBay samples and that didn't have yardage and if it was a foot you know so whatever so yeah that's what I've been up to and it's been fun I've I've enjoyed putting a lot more progress on this blanket um, it does knit up slowly and that's what I have to keep reminding myself my first one my camo one that ended up knitting up fairly quickly, but I was also using worsted weight yarn with size 10 needles. Where'd my needle go? Not the one in the blanket, where's the backup needle? I'm using mainly fingering weight for uh, this blanket and size, I think these are size three. Yeah, either size US size two or US size three needles I think they're threes I want to say they're threes um so yeah it's um this one's gonna take a while but I have a ton of minis to add to it and my husband actually can't wait until the uh, minis don't turn a corner anymore like one mini is now on one side because uh, how that if you've ever done a 10 stitch blanket that's kind of how it is everything kind of loops around at the very beginning because the sections are so small here let me hold it up again again when you get tangled in your own stuff
as you can see um, at the beginning the blue and the orange and the red and the white and the black it all kind of um, you know it it circled around a little bit more and as it gets bigger you know it's less and less and you know we'll just see how it goes I mean Jeannie probably w is going to make it to this corner but probably not much farther onto this side okay so I think I've rambled on long enough I should probably take care of this these stitch the stitch marker situation here <sighs> and um, I'm wondering if a DPN cozy would be appropriate for this it's only one DPN. I don't know. If you have uh, thoughts and comments on that, let me know. So, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys probably at the end of June. I'm hoping there's going to be another uh, yarn lounge in Orlando in June. But I have not heard anything yet. What is this? I'm sorry. I'm, I must look spastic to you guys. Or, a little piece of dust. My house is not dirty, I swear, but you know how some things just catch your eye. <sighs> so, hopefully there's another yarn lounge in June, and if there is, I um, look forward to going and, you know, seeing my indie dyer friends and, um, you know, buying more minis, because <laughs> I need more minis, like I need a hole in the head. Um, and if I get anything else, and I should have my yarn from Anne by then as well, and hopefully have finished the bone yarn shawl, so I'll actually have a real, fin a, a non-dishcloth finished object to show you. Um, my cowl design, that is actually out to testers right now, and I'm excited. I did get a question from one of the testers about how I had the seed stitch part. She's like, this doesn't make sense. And I'm like, yeah, it does actually. Um, so, yeah. The, um, oh my God, I'm gonna have to edit this ending. Sorry guys, my brain's just, so thank you again for the third time now. Thank you for watching, questions or comments down below, and once I get my pattern back from my testers and anything gets, um, and any changes are made, it will go, it will go up for sale on Ravelry, and I look forward to that. Um, I'm still not gonna show it here on the uh, podcast just because um, it is, like I've said a million times, it is going to be a Christmas gift, and the two people that will be receiving it, will be receiving one, um, they watch these videos in my podcast, and I don't want to spoil their Christmas, so I haven't started the second one yet. And when I get tired of knitting on the blanket, and I can't finish the shawl and I really don't want to knit dishcloths, I get the urge to cast that on. But I know once I cast it on, that's all I'm going to want to do. That's all I'm going to want to do. Yeah. Alright, that's enough. Let me get off here and maybe edit this or just leave my rambling in. So, thank you for wa I can't stop saying that. So, I'll see you guys later. Bye.